You are watching a clip from the Sports and Sorts podcast. A lot of big moves. Let's get to the let's get to the big stuff. The creme de la creme. Yeah, which is play ball. And of course, we can fit some of this in there. The state of the young Hmm. Indeed. So, they're going to talk a little bit MLB hot stove here. Patrick Corbin signed with the Nationals, which came out of nowhere. So much so, I was actually listening to the MLB network on, the, on Sirius XM. And one of their hosts actually apologized for the station. He said that it was their bad that this blindsided them. All the reports were saying Yankees or Phillies. Mm -hmm. And this really blindsided them. And they, he's like, I'm sorry. Like, this is, this is our bad. Um, you know, we were contacting everybody and it seemed like it was either going to be Yankees or Phillies, Yankees or Phillies, which everybody in everybody on the planet globe yeah. you know, thought it was going to be yeah. Phillies or the Yankees. And yeah. then out of nowhere, the Nats came in and gave them that sixth year and that was it. 140 and yeah, six years, $140 million deal. I can see why he went there. Sure. Um, that was a oh lot of God, extra money. Yeah. That was a lot of extra money to be left on the table. Forty million more than I think either the Yankees or the Phillies yeah, offered. I think I, the Yankees and the Phillies were both at around five years and a hundred million. Yes, and now, now that we wipe our hands clean of Corbin, which is which is a move I I'm sure he will regret. Um, if one of his main goals, if one of his main goals is to win and compete for championships, he will likely regret this decision. Maybe not. Um, maybe not in year one. He's not going to regret the financial side of it. That's but, for sure. But yeah, but that you know, his you know, his he grew up as a Yankee fan. His brother, I think his his brother is a diehard Yankee fan too. He yeah, wore a Yankee the whole fan. wedding he toast Yankee, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I I would have to say that he's going to regret the decision probably by year three because he is in a tough division. The Nats' offense isn't as good as they were last year. Yeah. The the fairly new manager Dave Martinez, who underperformed last year quite a bit, couldn't take this Scherzer, Strasburg, and Gio Gonzalez, you know, rotation yeah. with Bryce Harper, Trey Turner, Anthony Rendon, Juan Soto. They right. had that team. They went eighty two and eighty, yeah. and the division is just getting better. The Mets are improved. Right. It, it, actually, last year of all years. Should have been the year for the Nationals to really dominate that division because the Braves and the Phillies are both very young, and the Mets are a disaster. Right. And, and the Phillies and, are more going on their way down. And I think that, and, I think the biggest thing that we need to say to Corbin is that your decision to go to to go to the Nationals. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. It is. I, 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 I agree. I, I, as far as in championships and all that stuff and winning goes, I don't know if this is going to work out for him. And I can see his brother in year two and three giving him some digs. Hey, I see you, you got this new boat, but um, how's that third place and fourth place finish treating you? It could be it could be fourth because you know what the Mets are actually getting better incrementally better by the day, mm -hmm. and they have uh, said can... they are still making oh, moves. Yeah, I mean, if you know what, I, I know we poked a lot of fun at Brody Van Wagenen or whatever we his name sure is. We did. <laughs> he is. I'll tell you what though, he seems like a very. I watched him during that press conference when they introduced Cano and Diaz, and all, other than seeming maybe like a little bit nervous because it was probably his first big press conference, he seems like a very direct guy and a guy who's kind of no nonsense and is going to make some bold moves I, if you're a Mets fan you should like what you're hearing and seeing out of him at least early on and I know like a lot of Mets fans wanted to kill that trade just because Mets fans that is their desire is just to, to trash that team and that's understandable but when you really start to break down that trade you'll realize it was not a bad move it might even qualify as a good move um but as far as Patrick Corbin goes, and I tweeted this yesterday, and I completely stand by it. At six years and $140 million, I don't believe the Yankees dodged a bullet. I believe they sidestepped a missile. Whoa. Because I would not want any part of that guy at that kind of money. The years maybe don't bother me too, too much. He doesn't have a long track I, record of his, a success, but he has yes, been improving every year. But they just – you have to understand something. You, they just paid $140 million for a guy – who not only has he never pitched a playoff game, but in 2017, the Diamondbacks opted not to give him the ball yeah. in the playoffs mm -hmm. when he was active and healthy. Mm -hmm. What does that tell you? He has it's not a pitched. A play it's a little, a little nerve wracking. It's a, it's a red flag. Yeah, but it's not like the Arizona Diamondbacks are known as this great, you know, great 
the organization that always makes awesome decisions, you know? No, but I, I, yeah, but, but come on. I mean, this, this, but, but the guy earlier in his career had given you every reason to believe that he's the kind of person you want to hand the ball to in the playoffs. Yeah. This isn't a, this isn't, that's not rocket science. I, I don't know. That, that screams a little bit to me as a red flag. Now, am I a little disappointed the Yankees didn't get him? Yeah. I mean, he would have been my preference mm-hmm. because I really would have liked the righty lefty balance of the rotate. Not that yeah. that can't still happen. If they get half, then you still have that at least for a few more years. Mm-hmm. But Corbin, obviously, being, you know, he'll go into next season as a 29 year old. You know, even seven years younger than Hap, um, you know, with a really great slider. I mean, the guy's got good stuff, but to me, six years at 140 was too much. Uh, and what this, the other thing that this signals to me too, is that, and you know, I was a little bit actually more surprised by the Phillies coming in at only five years and 100 million because I thought the Phillies earlier in the day had made this comment like, "We're not going to be outbid." Right. Well, you were you were not only outbid, but you were blown out of the water. Yeah. So. And that's gonna, that happens from time to time. I mean, in these, in these in these hot stove season, you know, people, you know, that really are trying to reach to win, they end up spending a little bit more money and they get themselves into financial issues. I mean, the Yankees did that for a while. Yeah, yeah. They got themselves into some financial issues, um, and it took us several years to kind of correct that. Um, yeah. We finally so, did, but it took a long what, time. What I what I think is is interesting though from the Yankees' perspective is not surprisingly Brian Cashman had a he, there was a player he desired he put a particular value and a particular lifespan on that player five years and a hundred million he was not going to deviate from that what but what this tells me is that one he knows that there are other options out there he yeah. does I mean you, you you could turn to a Nate Evaldi you could turn to a J Hap you could uh, again reexamine the trade market with guys like Mad Bum and Carrasco and uh, and Kluber. Um, and I'm sure there's other guys that will be made available at the winter meetings that names that we haven't even heard of or thought of, because that's always how it goes yeah. down, right? Mm-hmm. You already have Jim. And I, I think the thing that made this a little bit easier for Cashman and probably for Yankee fans to swallow is that you already have James Paxton in hand. So your top three ro- pitchers in your rotation are set. You know that, you know, you let's not talk about CC as a fourth or even a fifth, because I'm not completely convinced that that's, going to be the case yet at least as far as him being the fifth we know there's going to be another guy that's going to slide ahead of cc it's just going to be a question who and if not there are if not sliding two people ahead of him in there exactly that's why i'm that's why i'm not even like i'm not even like technically including him in the rotation yet Mm -hmm. um but what the uh the second thing that this tells me is that if they if they are only allotting that kind of money to corbin and they were probably thinking if he takes it great wow we got him on a hometown discount awesome If he doesn't, we're going to go get a lesser pitcher that's going to cost us not nearly as much. And we're probably going to throw some money at a big at a big free agent now. Maybe something that we weren't originally going to do. And this makes me think now because I – not that the Nationals are out on Bryce Harper, but let's remember they offered him a 10-year, $300 million deal that he turned down. So you know it's going to cost at least that much for the Nationals to get him. It, more. It's going to cost more than that. Are you telling me the Nationals are going to go spend another $300 million plus on Bryce Harper when you've already thrown 140 at Corbin? In my opinion, Harper is gone. He is not going to be a National again. That removes a landing spot for him. To me, now, so you have, you still have Machado and Harper out there, and I believe both of those are going to get resolved next week at the winter meetings. Bottom line is I think the chances of the Yankees landing one of those guys has gone up quite a bit. I don't know which one you could make arguments that either is a fit, but the bottom line is one of those two guys is much, much more likely to land in New York than he was 24 hours ago because the Yankees, let's say, let's say they sign half. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's going to be probably three years in the $45 million range. Yeah. He's going to get somewhere between like 14 and 16 range. Exactly. So I'm thinking, yeah, I think three and 45 is probably pretty fair market value for him. I think you you're going to get for 14, but yeah, you're going to get a couple of relievers and yes, they'll, they'll cost you a little bit too, but not, you know, nothing out of control to me, that still leaves them with a lot of money to spend. And if Whoa. they can get a Machado or a Harper at a maybe slightly discounted rate, because both of those guys supposedly want to play in New York, 
And when I say slightly discounted, I don't. I, I mean, like maybe you get Harper at like eight years and two hundred and seventy million or something like yeah. that, as opposed to the ten year and all that crap. But yeah, I mean, both the guys are still going to be in the three hundred million dollar range. But yeah. maybe you get it like a little bit under. It makes it like a little bit more aesthetically palatable, mm-hmm. you know, as opposed to the three hundred million. But I just the way I see it now, I I I, I almost don't see a scenario under which the Yankees. Don't walk away with one of those guys. I mean, um, I, I'm hoping they don't. I really would just. So I was there, just like a, I was just. Yeah. My my. I would rather just see. And I know you're not a big Evaldi fan, but I've kind of warmed yeah. up to Evaldi. No. I'd like them to just go get Evaldi, go get two relievers, sign Marwin Gonzalez, and call it a winter. But uh, but let's remember something. These are still the Yankees, and the Yankees showed you last year that they are still capable of being the Yankees when they made the trade for Stanton. I mean, it was essentially a free agent signing. I know it was a trade, mm-hmm. but it was such a dump by by the by the Marlins that it might as well have been a free agent signing. So the Yankees are still the Yankees. They are still capable of doing this kind of thing. And they will do this kind of thing. And they will occasionally rope-a-dope other teams into thinking we're not going to go big game hunting, but they very well might. And I mean, I, I again, I don't know which one of these guys is the better fit. I mean, it's it's probably Machado, but I would probably mm-hmm. be a little bit more shocked if they didn't walk away with one of those guys mm-hmm. by the time the winter meetings is over than I was surprised by Corbin not signing. See, I I would be shocked if they really went after if they really went hard after either one of those guys. I'd actually think that Bryce Harper actually well, makes a better. I agree. I, I think don't you make think a better case. Hard. But I think one of them could fall to them. And I, in think, a sense. I think Harper. Remember, actually, there's only so many teams that can afford those guys. Right, too. and I understand. But there's there's teams that could spend just as much, if not more, money than us. So I, I think if there there is a a guy, the Phillies that, are going to get one of them. Right, uh, that, probably. That's a, and I think it, it, it really makes sense for the Phillies to get Machado. Like it doesn't make sense for yeah, them, to, them to go after Harper. It, it makes them more sense to go after Machado. I, and I think that the Yankees it makes more sense for them to go after Harper. Because they need to fill the void at first base. He's an athlete. He's gonna pick up first base, not super quick. You're gonna, have, but none of our first basemen were good to begin with. You know, they were never really good defensively. I mean, if you're sold on Voight and Bird, you know, right. yeah. Voight is a a void at, at at first base. He's not a good first baseman. He's gonna make a lot of errors over at first. Um, which no matter how good your infield is, if they're not getting balls picked and stuff like that, it's gonna have a lot of errors. Yeah. Um, but then you have, then you have Bird who has just hasn't produced and i think it's time to see if he can play somewhere else maybe in the national league somewhere and that's fine yeah. he's a good he's a decent first baseman he's above average first baseman he's not great and i think that harper could probably get to an above average first baseman skill set and he yeah. plays hard so he's going to work his butt off to be good at first base so the other I think, thing is that would add some years to his body it would, add, it would add years. It would and also it also to his do it, his to do it at such a young age too to have him be twenty six and to put him at first. I mean, you're you're gonna you're gonna get I would think a lot more offensive production. You're gonna get a, it's you're gonna late, get a lot of production in, in that lineup in in general. I mean, he's gonna walk a ton. He's gonna hit a lot of home runs. He's gonna walk a lot in that so, lineup. Yeah, I mean, it's his 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 on base percentage is gonna be four fifty at least. <laughs> in that lineup, it's just because he was in a down year last year. I think his on base was three eighty eight. Uh, yeah, was it? Even and that's, that's it. And that was in like a, I think it was that him. low. That yeah. is low for him, but that's in a down year. Yeah, and he, had, he still had a nowhere decent year. near the protection but, that he had, that he would have in New York. But as far as the Yankees go, I mean, as far as starting pitchers, I I think J. A. Happ. I'd be shocked if the Yankees don't get J. A. Happ at this point in time. I think they they put out their their number for Corbin, and I understand why the Yankees didn't go much higher than that for the Corbin. Mm-hmm. It was mm-hmm. weird for the for it not to happen though. Like as far you know, the love for Andy Pettit. It was weird. The, yeah, it was you know weird. him wanting to be a Yankee I, and all that kind of. I think stuff. you and, and I both weird. thought it was like a done deal. I it thought was, it was a done deal. It was weird. It was weird that it didn't work out, but it didn't. Now I think they move on to Plan B, which is J. A. Happ. Um, and I, I don't think they're going to look at Dallas Keuchel. I think Keuchel probably no, so. probably is looking. He might even be. He might be a Cincinnati Red. Um, there might be a chance that he goes there. Um, there, he's not. I, I don't even know if he's going to stay in the American League. So um, uh, I'd stay away from him. I mean, I like him. If this had been Dallas Keuchel of a couple of years ago, or you if know, you're the Reds, it's kind of like you you need oh, sure. something. You need. Just, um, yeah, oh, yeah. Absolutely. And he's not gonna, he's not going to he's not going to command the 140 mil. He's the second tier. Uh, you know, from Corbin, he's not. He'll probably be he'll probably be like five, maybe maybe four and ninety something like that. 
Um, you could get him probably for that. I could see the Reds having to go to 100 on him. Well, to get maybe him. because he's a, because it's Cincinnati, maybe. Yeah, uh, but because, that's what I'm saying. Like, they he's might 30, have. He's going to be 31 next right. year. He's already kind of started to decline. Oh, the decline uh, is there. So, it's, so it's scary. It's, that's, I would stay away from him. Yeah, so J.A. Happ is the guy I think they go to. I mean, he's on a decline as well. I, I know he pitched, like, lights out with the Yankees last year, but that was – that was not. That was like Aaron Small. Like he came, he played, pitched in New York, and he just went on, on a streak and just went absolutely dominated the league for some weird reason. That's not who J.A. Happ is. He pitched better than he's ever pitched in his life at last year and with and the Yankees. It's and that, gonna help him. It's gonna help him get a three. I mean, some team might even throw four years at him. Might. I think and, that's, and that's insane. That's good for, that's good for him I, because yeah. forty. Not, I'm not taking anybody's contract into forty as a, as a pitcher, even if you are a lefty. No. Um, unless no. your name is like Madison Bumgarner and or uh, Clayton Kershaw or something like that. Or, then, then maybe or, maybe or Tim Wakefield or Charlie Huff. I yeah, mean, if, you, if you're a knuckleballer and you can throw into your fifties. Yeah, exactly. Fine. Or, or otherwise, or, no. Yeah. Or uh, what was his name? Ja- Jamie. Uh, for the Mariners, oh, he pitched until he's Jamie. 47. Oh, Jamie, um, 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 oh my Jamie God. Moyer. Jamie Moyer. Moyer. Yes, Moyer. Yes. Um, yeah, 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 unless you're him. Um, oh, but, God, so, he had a rubber arm. Yes, he did. So, I, Jay Hat makes sense. Now, it's yeah. where do they go after this? Because there are still a lot of pitchers that are on the market. You have Charlie Morton, who's available. You have Gio Gonzalez, who's available. Charlie Morton, isn't he, like, isn't he, like, deciding whether or not to retire, even? I mean, uh, he's available. He's, he's available. available. Yeah, yeah, I Charlie like Morton's him. Available. But, I mean, I like Gonzalez stuff, is available. But... Lance Lynn is available. Oh God, please, stay away from Lynn. please stay away from Lance Lynn. Derek Holland. This is a guy you loved. Uh, I Derek did. Holland. But, that, but but we saw what happened. It just wasn't. No. Drew Pomerantz. There's a lot. There's a lot Sarah, of arms out there. I don't want Drew Pomerantz. There's a lot of arms out there. Yeah, but is a sixth guy? Oh, is a sit well if if they really Five, are going to do six, if they're going to go six man rotation. That's what I am. I am. That's I am all in on on six man rotation with this rotation. Their arms need it. They need a six-man rotation. That's why I have to – I can't harp on that enough. But, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of guys that are available. Um, I – and this is the great thing about – I'd rather see Patrick Corbin, a chance on Chance Adams as a – This – the great thing about going with, with, without Corbin is J.A. Happ is now going to cost you a lot less money. Obviously, that frees up to do some other things. And right. you're going to be able to do things like – Grab J.A. Happ. If you decide you don't need another pitcher, which is beyond me. I mean, you do have Chance Adams. Um, he could be another guy. But, I, you know, I like having those lefties, you know, like a, a Derek Holland or even a Gio Gonzalez for a short-term contract. Uh, yeah. I, how old – Gio Gonzalez is going to be – how old is he going to be? He's going to be 33. So you can probably get him on a two-year deal. Um, and, then, and then you have uh, Derek Holland, who's relatively young. He's 32. Um, mm. Those are guys that at the – I mean, as a – Five, four, five, or six, that's not a bad deal. And then if you go all the way down after all of those starting pitchers go, now, because you saved the money on the Corbin deal, you could possibly get Robertson and Britton. Yeah. Yeah. And that would be huge. This is a this is a, a rotation. I, I like I said, I can't harp on this enough. They need to get rest. Yeah. CC's not going to pitch 175 innings, which is not even what a start. Be lucky if you get 100. Be 130, right? 140 maybe. Wow, uh, I'd you, sign up. For, I'd sign up for 140. Um, oh my God. And then, and then you have Masahiro Tanaka, who you do, you want him around the 175 to 180 realm. Then yep. you have Severino, who you want less than 200 because obviously he proved last year. I mean, granted, he's yep. still very young, so he could get stronger. Paxton has never gone beyond 160. 160, and that was that was his high. Um, yes. And then you have you know Severino, who actually has, but he really struggled in the second half, whether he was tipping pitches or not. He wasn't. He didn't have the command. Didn't have as strong as command. Yep. Um, so it really makes sense to me. Six man yep. rotation, bolster up the bullpen. I'm not against it. And and go that route. Um, I, I do. And the problem with Robertson is I don't want to pay him for four years. Like yeah. he's he's thirty four. I, I understand relievers don't have as many innings on their arm and all that kind of stuff, but he's thirty four. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know he pitched well last year, but not great. Uh, he had a low WHIP, but uh, a decent ERA. I, yeah. I just I just I don't love it. I would I would give him maybe two or three years. But yep. I can't go to that fourth. I can't do it. I don't know if that's what he's looking for. Yeah. Um, no. But then you have the other other people out there. You know, other 
not so great relievers, but decent relievers like someone like, uh, you know, a Justin Wilson. We, we're familiar with him. He pitched well out of the pen um, mm-hmm. uh, for a couple different teams. Zach Britton, obviously, is my main go-to guy for this off uh, this coming season. And yeah. Andrew Miller is also available. If you have I Andrew think... Miller and Britton, oh wow, that'd be awesome. I, I think there's the money a money available now. I think they're going to look at Adam Adovino, too, from Colorado. Yeah, that wouldn't be bad. Gonna, I think he's going to get some consideration. Yeah, I think uh, he's going to get some consideration from a lot of teams. So Yeah, there's going to be a lot of teams looking for looking at him. I wouldn't be surprised if Boston was, too. And I'm sure Boston are looking at both Robertson and Britton. So mm-hmm. that's one thing. I, I mean, I'd hate to see either or both of them go there. That would suck. I would particularly um, hate to see Britton go there. Um, Robertson, I could be okay with because he gives up the fly. He's been giving up the long ball. Um, he, he hasn't been quite as stellar, um, and that Houdini act is less, you know, Houdini and more yeah, like yeah, the yeah. local guy at TGI Fridays, <laughs> magician guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, uh, but he is good. He is good. I would, I would gladly take him back, but at the right price for the right amount of years. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, is there, is what else, what else do we have on the table here? Did anyone want to talk about any other moves that have been made? I mean, the Mets, Mets still are in. They're they're looking at like who are they looking at for? Um, are they looking at Grandal or Gomes? Which one are they looking at? I don't remember which. which no, not Gomes. They, Gomes already got. He signed, Gomes right? was he was tra- or traded, right? Traded, was he traded? Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, I, we can talk about Cleveland. The tra- the trades with Cleveland, possible trades with Cleveland with the Yankees and Carrasco, all these other teams. Kluber. Yeah, Carrasco, Kluber, and, well, and I even mean, Bauer. Could... They've even thrown Bauer out there. Yeah, I, Bauer's I, out there. I don't want Bauer at all. I wouldn't want Bauer. Hate him. Uh, I'd want Carrasco, <laughs> to be honest. Guy. I'd really want Carrasco. He's, Just because he's, he's younger. Yeah. He's younger, yeah. and I love his stuff. His now, stuff is electric. The one problem with this trade, with the Carrasco trade, or the Bauer trade, or the, the Kluber trade, whatever, one of these teams, and the, the Indians have made this announcement that they want one of these guys to be able to take the salary from Kipnis. Yeah, they want Kipnis, yes. So and, you got to give it. So you got to take Kipnis on. Would that be worth it to get Carrasco might, for it, not as many prospects? It but might now be, you get yes. a, now you get that second baseman who's actually a really good second baseman. Right. Yeah. I mean, it is kind of a good fit for the Yankees. It's a, you know, I look. I know Kipnis, especially early on, on, because you know, if even if you want Glaber Torres to play short. I mean, look, the Mets just did this. Okay. Well, not anywhere near to the extent. I mean, the the, the Mariners just did this, but not nowhere near to the extent. I mean, that that was uh, Cano's contract is dwarfs Kipnis's. Yeah, Kipnis, I yeah. think, is only carrying one year and seventeen million left, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if they're just trying to get some one year relief, I mean, you only have to carry that contract for a year. Yeah, and you could get Carrasco for lesser for less. I'm all over that. And you could you could potentially make a trade at the deadline. With with Kipnis because you you can move Glaber back to second and then Didi comes in so you could potentially if he's having a good year you could if he's move having him a good more. year you could... but he's a scrappy guy it's kind of the guy that yeah you I, would, team. I wouldn't want to move him though if he was but, playing well because but he also the last few years you know you're looking at like a two thirty average oh um, yeah which no, is no. something that we don't want I mean that's no. like that's Neil Walker two point we're gonna get right. a little bit more power better defense but still a lot of strikeouts not a lot of walks yeah um, so it's tough. I do. I don't. I do like Kipnis though. I, I do, and I think maybe in the Yankee lineup, maybe he'd maybe he'd see more pitches. I would have to assume he'd see more pitches. Yep. Um, I'd be okay with that if Carrasco was the return, and I, I don't. I, I don't even know if I could speculate what the prospect haul would be because there is a salary dump involved. It, it here. wouldn't be a lot. It, it definitely wouldn't be as bad. Yeah. I mean, I'm. Just, I don't know. I mean, I like. Are you getting Florial? No, no. No way. No way. You're not getting Florial. You're not they're getting, not getting no. Chance Adams. They're not getting. They're not getting those guys. They're getting. Well, they might guys. get. They might get. Seventeen million dollar dump. It's a big dump. Yeah, it's it's. it's, it's a, I took a bigger dump this morning, but it's a big. <laughs> it's a. <laughs> I knew you were going there. I could see the wheels turning. <laughs> oh yeah, they were. Like, you were like, should I say it? Should I say it? Should, should I should, say yeah, it? Yeah, I'm doing it. I'm going. Yeah, I did. I'm going. Yeah, I did. No, I'm crossing the line. <laughs> yeah, no, I went there. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's a pain. We, we you know we we told the line on PG thirteen. So. Um, but uh, I would do it. I would take. I would do it. I, it just depends on what they're gonna. I would imagine too that that's a trade that would happen next week, mm-hmm. because that's a winter meeting kind of deal right there. Yeah. And I would imagine that, you know, Cashman would be all in on a guy like Carrasco. Now, if they got Carrasco and kept this, and there was just and the, and and you know you're only giving up. A couple of prospects, man, that makes this rotation yeah. 
really good. Yeah. Like, and, really good. Yeah. And I would like to – and the thing that I would like to know is, you know, there are a lot of – you know, we, we have a lot of Yankee fans I mean, that, that kind of listen to the show and watch the show. Um, and I would like to know who they would want as their – as the offseason guys. Would they trade for Carrasco, Bauer, Kluber? You know, who would they go for? Would they take on the salary dump? Would they just give more prospects to not have to take the salary on so they could free it up more towards, like, bigger-name prospects and things like that? Would you rather have Harper or Machado? Um, those are the kind of things that I would like to see um, – is uh, some bigger – I want to see some – I want to have some other opinions out here. I, I would like to know what you guys have to think because obviously I think six-man rotation is very detrimental. That is what yeah. they need to go to. They obviously have shown over the last two years. This isn't just like uh, we saw for th- three months that they, they need to kind of expand their rotation. No, this has been going on for years now um, where, you know, Masahiro Hedronaka needs to have some, you know – some time off he pitches better cc pitches a lot better when he has some time off you could probably even keep him off the dl if you went to a six million rotation and he might give you 140 innings if he's getting sick he's getting you know six days rest hey here's a thought what would you think about including i don't know if the indians would do it because if the idea is to dump salary i'm not sure they'd want to do it but what if you put Sonny gray in that trade that way they're getting back a pitcher but then of course but then they're taking on his nine million, so it's really only like an eight million net saving. But you, but, but you, you are, are getting a you, you are, are getting, getting a major league ready yeah. pitcher in return yeah. with a good track record and a There's guy a who's chance. still in his I late twenties. Yeah. I mean, and it keeps them competitive. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't. They're still going to win that division. Yeah, I mean, don't is. get me wrong. If they, if they lost Carrasco but picked up Sonny Gray and dumped Kipnis' salary, they're still winning that division. Oh, I mean, yeah. I don't. I know. I know the White well, Sox have outrageous amounts of money to spend yeah but the white Sox are not going to come back that quickly i mean the ti- the tigers are a mess uh it's just a the twins, the twins uh, are the, they, they uh, are bad but they uh, you know sometimes they just put it if, together and make a run like is, the a's did last year there's no reason the, the, the indians outside of injury would have no excuse not to win that division regardless yeah i mean they, they, they really they really wouldn't they, and, and I, i'll tell you it, and then if you're the Yankees, boy, from that perspective, then you're only picking up eight million. Can you imagine if the Yankees were able to address two r- rotation spots and get guys like Paxton and Carrasco and have it almost cost them like nothing? That would be amazing. Because it, because they were because there were trades. Paxton's salary was offset by Gray's. I don't even know what Carrasco makes. So. I mean, he can't be – Carrasco can't have a huge contract yet. I'll look it up in a second. But but then uh, – and if it, but Kipnis does fill a need because, yes, you could put him at second and you could move Glaber to short. Didi comes back. You know, and then Kipnis, Kipnis could be – you know, you can, you can use him. You could put him at first base too. He could give guys a blow at first. Um, I, I tell you what, it's not – it's not ideal, but it, it's it's one of those things where it's like, okay, if I can get correct, it's just like the Mets deal. Yeah, we'll take on Cano. We're getting the best closer in the game, in Diaz. Yeah. I mean, and if you're the Yankees, we are getting a potentially top flight starter with electric stuff. We just have to take on Kipnis for a year. I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm kind of all over that because I think uh, I think it just makes too much sense for both sides. I would imagine. And I would imagine, too, that if Cashman had his choice between Kluber and Carrasco, my, my guess is he would go Carrasco just because he's younger. And, and his stuff, again, what's up? He's got – so for 2019, he's going to make 9.7. Okay. Which is basically what Sonny Gray makes. Yeah, right. And then and then, and then you dump in Kipnis as well. No, oh, well, no, and then he's the next year he's 9.5. Oh, so he's got some control too. I guess, yeah. That's what it so says you got here. D- anything else beyond that? It's a club option, so yeah, he's got control. Is there? I mean, anything else beyond the beyond? No, then he's a, he's a free agent in 2021, but he's 34 at his free agent year. That's old. Yeah. That's old to be a first free first like a real have a real be like your big contract. He's not getting a huge. It's contract not going to be a big now. contract. No, yeah. I mean, he's making good money. I mean, 9.7 and then 9.5. What were? Do you, do you have his numbers from last year? I'm just curious. Uh, yes. Is I'm that? curious. They were good. They were really good. Well, I mean, he was a side contender. Yeah, um, yeah. I believe. Uh, so he had 30, 30 starts. Okay. Um, he, 192 innings, struck out 231 batters, 17 and 10 with a 3.38 ERA. 
Uh, I mean, that's I'm not sure if he was a Cy Young, but I know he pitched pretty darn well. Yeah, I'll tell you. I, I oh my god, I'll I would take right him. Now. I'd take him in a heartbeat. Uh, I'd take him in a heartbeat. No, I'm really he, he wasn't last year, but the year before, the year before he was uh, the fourth. He was the fourth runner, so he was fourth overall in Cy Young voting. So in, two, in, when, in his 30th year, he's 18 and six with a 3.29 ERA. So he's 30. Engines. Is he 31 now? He's 31 right now. Yeah. 31 now. Okay. Yeah. yeah he I mean... is. Yeah. So he's 31 right now. He will be 32. In what is it? He'll be 32 so, in March. Yeah. Okay. So he'll so he'll hit 32 starting the season. But I mean, still, you've got him for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. You got Paxton for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Tanaka, you still have under contract. You still and Severino, you're gonna. He basically pitched just as well last year as he did the year before. I mean, you'd have to like their rotation for the next couple of years. High. Um, yeah, I, they're. I, you can't complain at, at that point in time. If I mean, they if, got if they him. got Carrasco and then Kipnis to fill the void until Didi comes back, and then because with Kipnis at and I, I know I don't want to trade Andujar. I really don't. But oh, he I don't, really uh, makes yeah. the most sense to trade when if you're trying to find somebody, you know, whether it's a pitcher or something along those lines. Look, again, I'll say this again. Sense. If, if Andahar is going to be dealt, then the name that I have to hear back on the other end has to be Mad Bum because it has to be part of a larger package. Yeah. I'm not – I'm not. Uh, you know what? I like Carrasco, but I'm not dealing Andahar for Carrasco mm-hmm. unless Kipnis is not involved in the deal. But even then, I really am not crazy about that. I really don't want. I really don't want to deal Andahar unless the name on the other end is Madison Bumgarner. If it yeah. is, then fine, you can have him. You can take a few other guys. I know too. the Ooh. Phillies are looking at him now, um, too. The Phillies are interested in Mad Bum. They're trying to kick the tires. Oh yeah, on that yeah, too, yeah. Which yeah. makes and sense. That's not I mean, surprising. But <laughs> I mean, come on. Phillies are going to be in on everything, man. Uh, I mean, the Phillies are in everything. They are really, they are really making some noise this off season. I mean, who do you think, as of right now? I want to like to know what everybody else thinks. Who's won the? The off season so far, we are we haven't even really hit it hard. Well, so the Phillies got rid of Santana. I mean, mm-hmm. that's addition by subtraction, yes, right there. Yeah. They oh. got Segura, mm-hmm. and then who who, uh, who who did they get just before that? Who was the other? What was the other move? The other they made another big move. Didn't they make another big move before so. that? Didn't, Is I it just was, Segura? I thought so. Oh, uh, I, I thought that I thought they had made another another signing or or something the week a week before. Maybe okay. maybe not, but. Okay. I mean, but if but the big the Mets, moves, so... the Mets made big good moves. They made some good moves. Yeah, and I, uh, every one of these things that we're going to talk about is at the expense of the Mariners because they're just, you know, they're just blowing it up. Um, so I mean, you know, look, the Yankees, the Yankees so far have Paxton. Mm-hmm. That's either their number two or their number three. My guess is he's their number two. Um, then you've got then you've got Segura to the Phillies, which is a great acquisition. And again, you got rid of Santana, so big, you know. Again, addition by subtraction. And then you've got Cano and Diaz to the Mets. I mean, I don't know. I, you can make an argument for any one of those three teams. Yeah. I think right I think, now, as of right now, the Phillies um, and the Yankees are probably have the better offseason. Um, but I, I will say that it's close. It's very close. Cause it's the, close. The, the, Mets, the Mets are there, but their team isn't as good. So I think that – there, I think the moves that were made and the money that's still readily available to the Phillies and the yep. Yankees, I think yep. that's what makes them the winners so far. Um, well, yeah. And I think I mean, that we're going to find out who the real winners are um, over the next yeah, three Yeah, because the Mets, so. the Mets just assumed a lot of salary. Yes, so. they assumed a lot of salary. Yes, they're willing to spend a little bit more, but – Still, they're not going to be able to make a, pl- a splash on Harper. Tec- and, and if they do, holy crap, that would be yeah. insane. I mean, technically speaking, you could say the Yankees outside of CeCe and, and Gardner have spent no money because right. Paxton is going to be a wash when Sonny Gray is traded. Right. So that that one salary will erase the other. Um, and then if they get Carrasco, I mean, that's not a big – that's not yeah, – no, that would be huge. I mean, there, there, uh, there are some ways that they could really, really make a huge, huge signing. Um, I'm getting phone calls from California. I, uh, I'll i tell you, if they can – I'd rather have – now, I'm sure, though, that the Indians would rather – my guess is they'd rather dump Kluber to the Yankees. One, he's a little older. Mm. Two, he makes more money. Mm. Plus, if you package him with Kipnis, then you're That's really, then you're really dumping – then you're really dumping some salary. I don't think Cashman will make that move. But theoretically, the and I don't want him either, though, and I, I would guess that Cashman would be way more interested in Carrasco, but theoretically – 
the prospect hall would be even less. Yeah. So you're probably getting him for like nothing. Yeah. Uh, very, very little. Mm. I yeah. mean, because it's just you're just dumping a ton of money to the Yankees. I don't know what Kluber's making. I'm guessing it's probably the same as Kipnis, but with probably a couple of more years of control. We only have about 15 seconds. I'll find out. And that's okay. Time. Kluber. Oh my. They wanted me to change it to Blubber. Kluber. <laughs> he is making oh, 17. Yeah, I knew he was making 17. Million. He's controlled for two more years. They are both club options, I think. Yeah. Okay. So 17.2, then 17.5, and then 18. Which, if he's pay- playing at pitching at a Cy Young level, but then you're having, that's, that's well worth it. it. That's, that's yeah, so worth that's it. Worth but it. if he's pitching kind of like how he did towards so, the end last year, but then again, six man rotation. My guess is that the Indians would rather dump Kluber. Oh, of course. Because you're just dumping a ton of salad. Yeah. But again, but then you can't ask. I mean, if you're going to dump him and Kipnis and you're dumping $34 million on the Yankees, you cannot ask for much in return. You really can't. Mm-hmm. You can't. You can't yeah. ask for that much. Yeah. I mean, if, if the Yan- if the Yankees gave uh, Sonny Gray back, that would help. Mm-hmm. And then, but the prospect call still can't be crazy. No, I, you You're can't not do get... much after that at that point in time. Because he's like I said, the good thing is that he's got club control yes, after two right. next two years. But still, that's still a large chunk of money. It is. That's a large chunk of money. I mean, you would mm-hmm. love to be able to pay out the club control money because then All that right. means it's pitched well to the point where you want to keep him. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, that's that's pretty much it for our, our our hot stove talk. I mean, we really went in for a, a good at least twenty minutes. It seemed it was a good, it was uh, a deep dive uh, there. Yes, it was. So now we're gonna head on over to. Where do you think you're going? I'm gonna sort it out. What what are we gonna do? Swords. <laughs> Swords. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You have just watched a clip from Sports and Sorts where we go live every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday on YouTube. Thanks for watching.